I'm Dr. Meyer, we're glad that you're here. And I want to begin today with a clip from Illustra Media's beautiful documentary movie, Darwin's Dilemma. This clip's going to tell you a little bit more about Dr. Stephen Meyer and the theory of intelligent design. I begin to present the positive scientific evidence that supports this new alternative view to neo-Darwinism. I want you to listen. If the Darwinian mechanism cannot explain the origin of the information necessary to produce the Cambrian animals, is there any other cause that can? For more than 20 years, Stephen Meyer has explored this fundamental mystery. In August 2004, Meyer published several of his conclusions in a peer-reviewed journal affiliated with the Smithsonian Institution. His essay triggered a firestorm of controversy that jeopardized the career of the journal's editor, evolutionary biologist Richard Sternberg. But why did a technical paper on the origin of animal body plans evoke such heated response? For many people, the problem with my paper was simply the conclusion. I not only argued that the Darwinian mechanism could not explain the origin of the new form and information that arises in the Cambrian, but I also argued that there were critical features of that explosion that pointed to the reality of a designing intelligence in the history of life. Since his years as a graduate student at Cambridge University, Meyer has worked to develop a scientific case for intelligent design, a case based on a standard method of reasoning used by both Darwin and the famed 19th century geologist, Charles Lyell. Lyell insisted that the best explanation for an event in the remote past was a cause known from our experience to produce it, a presently acting cause, one now in operation. The present is the key to the past. That was Lyell's dictum. It was its standard historical scientific methodology. If you're trying to reconstruct what happened in the remote past, we should let our present experience of cause and effect guide our search for the best explanation. This reasoning helped focus Meyer's conclusions about the origin of information. The light came on for me because I realized it's not that hard. What you're looking for are causes which are known to produce the kinds of effects you're trying to explain. I asked myself the question, what is the cause now in operation that produces new information, whether it's digital code or whether it's hierarchical information in the form of a blueprint? Where does that kind of information come from? Well, we know from our experience, from our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning about the past, that information always comes from an intelligent source. So when we find information in the Cambrian animals, when we realize that large infusions of new information are required to build those animals, the most natural thing, the most logical thing to conclude is that those animals owe their origin to an intelligent source, that the information required to build them, in turn, must have come from an intelligence. Dr. Meyer, you have played a leading role in developing the f and formulating the scientific case for intelligent design. And I want you to tell the folks your story. How did this come about? Well, in the mid 80s, I was a young scientist and I was working for an oil company as a geophysicist. And I was working in um, seismic processing, which was an early form of uh, information technology. And uh, a conference came to town in Dallas, where I was working at the time that was just absolutely fascinating to me. I'd long been interested in the, in the big issues in science, the, the intersection of science and philosophy. The, the conference discussed three big questions, the origin of the universe, the origin of life, and the origin and nature of human consciousness. At the, at the conference, there was a scientist there named Charles Thaxton, who had just written a, a, a major book on the, the question of the origin of the very first life. It was called The Mystery of Life's Origin. And he showed that this was a, a, an unsolved problem uh, in, in modern biology and that there was no chemical evolutionary theory that explained how we got from the chemicals in the prebiotic soup to the, the, the first living cell. And the key problem that he focused on that many of the other scientists on the panel acknowledged was the problem of the origin of information, the, uh, the problem of the origin of the genetic information stored in DNA that you need to build the first cell. Well, I was fascinated with this and uh, ended up getting to know Thaxton, was introduced at the conference, and started to visit with him after work. He had, in the epilogue to his book, The Mystery of Life's Origin, floated an idea that he called 
Well, he didn't really have a name for it. He said that there was something about the, the information-bearing properties of DNA that suggested that perhaps we were looking at evidence of an intelligent cause, is the way he put it. And at the time, he didn't develop this into a full-blown theory, but it was more of an intuitive connection uh, based on our understanding, or his understanding, and, and that of many people, that, that information is a kind of mind product. It's the sort of thing that comes from a mind or an intelligence or a conscious agent. It's not something that comes from chemistry. 